Welcome to Ask GMBN. Uh, we have got some great questions for you this week, and I'm hoping some of them are going to challenge Neil Donahue. Well, some of them might, but this first one isn't, because <laughs> it seems quite easy. Well, yes. Ben Hunt, are you ever coming to New Zealand? Oh, please. The answer is, I don't know. Oh, I want to go there so much. Uh, I do. I've never been. Have you ever been? I haven't ever been to New Zealand, but I mean, obviously, it's got a great mountain biking scene. I follow quite a lot of people who ride in New Zealand. Me too. Um, it looks fabulous. It's definitely, we've not been there, definitely not because we don't want to go there. It's just the opportunity hasn't arisen. I'm sure we will. I just don't know when. Blake has just been to Australia, the lucky devil. Yeah. So nearly. Almost. Nearly. Well, or is that, say is that yeah. sacrilege? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I won't get into that. JTB says, what's your favourite music to listen to? when out shredding solo if you do that i don't because i tr have you ever tried it riding and listening to music uh i haven't no not not with like you know earbuds in or something like I that i did it i went up uh at morzine listened to acdc yes. yes. couldn't do it i'm just no. trying to ride at 120 percent listen to that i lie neil actually i remember now i did try it about 20 years ago but that was before there was earbuds and you know you had like a little cable and everything yeah. um, and I remember I went out street riding with your and CD I thought player massive. I was desperately trying to <laughs> yeah my disc they kept, display. kept skipping no I wanted to try and learn um, foot jam tail whips yeah um, and I had my chords in and I had Sweet Home Alabama playing, like you do, <laughs> what? Um, and I was trying to foot jam whip and then the court cable got caught on the brake lever and I nearly yeah. pulled one of my ear eardrums out because yeah. it all got caught up in me Twizzler. Twizzler. Yeah. I don't like listening to music whilst I'm riding. I've done on the turbo, you know on rollers, on, the yes. turbo, on rolls on the turbo, not a turbo, rollers. Yes. And again, I put my phone, bad idea, put it in my bottle cage <laughs> with my headphones on <laughs> and my headphones fell out my ears and went into the roll. <laughs> Oh. Literally, I've never seen a set of ear, uh, <laughs> earphones explode in so many pieces. <laughs> Amazing. Um, there's one serious point here, actually, is you do need to be careful if you are out riding with music playing in your ears, because um, I was actually out on a trail in Whistler this year, and while I was parked up next to the trail, it was a two-way trail, someone was coming the other way, and Jack was up the track saying, slowing everybody down because I was on a tandem, stopped on the trail, yeah. and he was saying slow down, and he couldn't slow this guy down because he was music in his ears, he wasn't listening. He rode right past Jack and rode head on straight into me, Whoa. and he crashed and he really hurt himself. Oh dear. He really hurt himself. Jack's yeah. fault. Um, so Jack, try harder next time and also yeah that guy i hope you're all right but you shouldn't have had your earbuds in so loud mm. so it's dangerous it's dangerous we've got a great question question here from robert richards uh says he's looking into buying his first proper full suspension bike but i drive an mg tf oh you know that is car. a little sports car a little two-seater mgs yes. uh it's a little two-seater oh, it says that uh, i bought a boot rack for it so i strapped the current bike down to using a ratchet straps and pipe insulation to protect the frame before i go spending a few grand on a new bike can driving your bike around like this damage it um well it i guess it could if it fell off um what you know i've seen blake damaged one of his bike actually you know um where you stick like on pickup trucks where you stick the front wheel over the top of something and you sort of wedge it in yeah uh blake actually damaged his down tube on his carbon bike uh with his bike rattling around for a long time on there yeah i think oh. if you strap it to the boot rack probably um, Gonna be all right. That is also a very small car to strap a bike to. Like, it, how do you transport a bike if you've got a well, tiny little car? I mean, like my Aston Martin. Oh, here we go. My Aston Martin. I've dug myself a hole here. Vantage that was mine technically for three days. God, that car sounded nice. Did sound very good. Yeah. And I had like a, I don't know what the roof was. I think it's sort of plastic. So you pushed on it. it dunk, dunk. And I had one of those sea suckers. Unbelievably yeah. uh, powerful things. And you put it on, it sucks really powerfully onto the roof. And then, so two on the roof and one on the boot. And it was really, really strong. So you can stick those. You see them on sports cars. I've seen a few and, and fancy cars. Is it safe? It is, but I was really, really worried driving around because the roof did go a bit like doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah i was like please can we take this bike off the roof of this car because <laughs> i can see the, t the front bit falling off and it dragging down the side as me oh yeah so you were more worried about your bike scratching the car than your bike falling off and getting down yeah <laughs> so it's a different angle of the same question true but yeah it's interesting how do you transport your bike if you've got a small car and if you're out there in your little uh fiat Polos? That's not a car. No, that's a VW Polo. Okay, I just expose. 500s, they're just, small. I've got one of them. Have you? Yeah, Lisa's got one. All right. Sorry, I digress. <laughs> uh, Robert, that's what I was trying to remember. How can I remember my own car? That's insane. 
Callum Richards says, what happened to Send of the Month? Yeah, we were doing some monthly versions of that video. It sits on the Dirt Shed show quite yeah. happily. I quite like showing your sends each week. We do get some really good ones. We do have some week. really, really good ones. So what I might do is go through the archives of the recent ones and maybe put a Send of the Month together because that is a yeah. very good shout. They're a very good video. And I like seeing people actually make stuff. The Fails and Bales ones, starting to make my... I'm, I'm feeling quite nervous when I watch them now. I don't feel good afterwards. I do. It's Some... normally quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not... It is funny, but then afterwards you're like, oh, it affects you a little bit. I've yeah. watched too many of them. I've watched too many. So, yeah, I'm going to do a send of the month. You're right. Um, Apostolos Cortidis. I can't wheelie or manual at all. I'm roughly 60 inches tall. Do you know what that is? The... No, five, five feet. feet, yeah. And I've got a size medium Scott Aspect 960. Could the size of my bike affect that? Mm, that, well, it, it could. It depends on how the bike fits you, really. Um, five foot is kind of, it's probably not the bad size bike for that. It's probably size, right. actually, yeah. Um, I would say it can do a little bit, but not completely. So you will see people that are much shorter than that and riding bigger bikes that can manual. So it's about making sure you're throwing your weight around enough. So yeah. it shouldn't stop you, but it can make it a bit harder. Yeah, the thing is as well, is I've seen so many people now with so many different um, ways of riding, either it be the size of their bike, either it be their riding style, maybe a disability they've got, like people with like one arm, for, for instance, or I've seen a guy riding BMX with one leg, mm -hmm. and they all manage to do stuff that you just think, yep. it's crazy. At the end of the day, you can always make it work. I'm pretty sure you can always make it work, but there are obviously setups that make things easier. But once you go towards one particular setup for something like a manual, you're gonna naturally move away from making something else yeah, it's exactly. easy. I would say so, you, could, you could put a short stem on there, which is going to help, yes. but then it's not going to be as good for climbing. So, yeah. it swings and roundabouts. Right? It really is. It really is. But I'm sure you can do it. Keep trying. Keep um, trying. Martin, Jake Dog has got some trust issues. Should I trust the bike shop when they say, your bike is dangerous, you should buy this one? Or is that just a marketing strategy? Personally, I would. I would trust the store. It, I'm, Jake, you exaggerate a little bit. I would find it hard to believe that someone says, your bike's dangerous, you should buy this one. Yeah. I would think, you know, they could maybe infer that, but I doubt someone would say that, that directly. Yeah. And if they're saying your bike is dangerous, I, you know, I would trust a bike shop to yeah. be telling bikes, you. Bike stores are really... The independent bike stores that I've ever been in, uh, they're always bike enthusiasts. They really know what they're talking about because they've got so much experience in riding themselves and fixing and uh, purchasing bikes. And usually they've got, they're pretty good hearted and they, they're trying to give you a great experience riding bikes. They want you to come back at the end of the day. And they, you will probably find that, you know, uh, uh, it's a huge amount of reputation with bike shops. It's really important to them. So. Uh, I know a friend, Sandy, who I did a podcast with earlier in the year about running a bike shop, and you'll find that people like that are so enthusiastic and they live or die on their reputation, so they don't want to be given bad advice, I would no. say. Yeah, absolutely. They work pretty hard on that. Yeah, give them a go. Um, Random Riding says, uh, can you climb on a downhill bike? You can. Yeah, you can. Um, it's not going to be much fun, probably. It's not going to be very fast. Uh, it's going to be a dog, but you can. Yeah, and why is that? Because the front end's going to be very high. You're just going to be sat like this because your yeah, shock's going to be sagging. Mm. It's going to be really slack. Every pedal stroke is going to move the bike around a lot. It probably weighs quite a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You do see people put drop posts on downhill bikes. Not very many people, to be honest. Yeah. But I remember riding my first real proper setup downhill bike. It was at a World Cup in Caprun, which I'm mm. sure you would have ridden that I race. I raced once at Caprun, yeah. Yeah, um, and it was Anne Caroline Chausson's bike. Mm -hmm. I rode it around the car park and was like, she said I could take it up the hill for a go. Wow. And I was like, this thing is horrible. I rode around the car park, it's disgusting. And then I took it up on the, the lift. Um, I think it was a drive-up lift, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, we took it down the hill. And suddenly when it got down on the slope, I was like, oh, right, these things just go downhill. Is that they, it? They lit the clues in the name. Even on the flat, they're yeah. pretty hard. It was like this. It's like this thing's just but doesn't get work. it on a downhill. Wow. Boy, are they good. Unbelievable. Yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's uh, take a look at some more downhill on this trail versus downhill bike video. Ooh, Neil, that's an argument that we're gonna have to settle right now, today. Which is better, downhill bike or enduro bike? Uh, 
Um, Sandy Sunday says, I have a Cube Picture. Stereo 140 HPC TM. TM. Uh, Team. Team, a 27.5 2020 bike. Um, it comes with a 150mm fork and a 140mm rear shock. Yep. Uh, I put a 160mm fork on it. Sounds good. Still with me? I am. Um, but could I put a 150mm rear shock on it? Doesn't work like that. Oh! Fork simple, rear shock. Because actually, your fork actually has 160 mil of travel. Your rear shock, you look at it, it's only got probably that much because it all works on leverage. So your rear axle moves quite a lot, but your shock only moves a little bit. So potentially you could put a longer stroke shock on there, but unless you get the same eye to eye, it's going to then jack the back end up. And even if you get the right eye to eye and put more travel on it, you can find your rear wheel hits the seat or because it's not designed for it. So that's why a longer travel frame is probably going to look a little bit different. So I have done it with some bikes, potentially can sneak it a little bit, but I've done it with the help of like Fox. I made, actually I made my bike short travel, which is easier. Um, but I would say mm, you probably can't. Do you know what? I did not, I sort of did know that once you said it, but I would never have thought of that. Because you don't get 150mm uh, yeah. shock, you just get a, um, what are they, two and a half inch stroke shock and you can mess around with that. In fact, they're all metric nowadays, I'm talking out of my uh, yes. rear end, but you know. Yeah. Uh, very interesting, good question, great answer, loved it. Uh, you and Alan, this is the last one to test you, Neil. Um, hey guys, love the show, how necessary are super light bikes and does weight affect jumping? Big subject. Yeah, I'm sure we've answered this, well, I've tried to answer this a lot of times. How necessary are super light bikes? They're not. Unless you're racing cross country, then a super light bike is kind of nice, but you definitely don't need it. In fact, in some situations, they've been proven to be faster, a heavy bike. Yeah. Um, people are adding weights to bikes. In yeah, I've races. seen that. I saw someone testing the other day with lead, pieces of lead on the downhill bike. Yeah, not, not everyone's doing that, but people have tried it. So things like super, uh, well, lighter weight wheels will make your bike feel better because of rotating mass, but I wouldn't get too hung up on it, to be honest. Does weight affect jumping? Mm, I mean, not necessarily. Think about e-bikes, they're really, really stable in the air. They take a bit more work to get into the air, but you've got a motor to help you out. And once you're there, you find that little mistakes won't punish you as bad because the bike just wants to, you know, it's got, what's you call it, momentum, not momentum? Inertia. Inertia. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. I don't know, <laughs> don't, don't go go by my word. Um, yeah, great. Uh, Great way to experience a heavy bike is out jumping, actually, because you do feel the difference there and it does feel super stable. Although when you cool. case things, obviously it's a lot of weight then. Boom, you can start breaking things maybe. Oh yeah, that's a good point. And it depends what sort of jump you're doing because the moment you try and like spin a heavy bike, True. flip a heavy bike, then it does start changing You don't want a big up. heavy e-bike and land it on your head, do you? No, you don't. No, that's not a good idea. Hey, great questions this week. Really good. Um, if you want to get a question to us, the comment section down below or on social media, anything you want, um, hashtag AskGMBN. That's the way to get a question yeah, to us. Use that hashtag. We'll find it and hopefully help you out next week. Yeah, absolutely. Look forward to seeing what your questions are. If you'd like to stay with us, then click over there for one of our top videos this last week and hit the old subscribe button. Thumbs up. See you later.